So I guess we're actually doing this. So just in time for New Year's resolutions and new habits that will probably go away within the next few weeks, there's this new show on Netflix called Tidying Up with Marie Kondo, which is based off of her best-selling book, The Magical Art. The Magic Art? The Magic Art of Tidying Up with Marie Kondo. Konmari or Marie Kondo's way of decluttering is something that I've been familiar with since I was in college. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's basically this idea that um, you're taking account of all the physical possessions that you have and you're only keeping those that, um, in her words, spark joy. So in very crude terms, the net result is you get rid of a lot of the things that you own um, because the reality is that most of the things that you own, most of the things that you've bought are just kind of there and taking up space and they don't actually make you happy and so um, the appeal with a uh Marie Kondo is the idea that you're creating a living space where everything you own is there to make you happy and nothing there to take up space or just to exist for the sake of existing. So like I said, I've known about Marie Kondo for quite some time um, and it's always been something that I've kind of had like I knew that it was a good thing like it's kind of one of those things that like you really can't hate um, but for me I've always been so emotionally conflicted with it because the idea of getting rid of things causes me such anxiety. And the reason for that is because I assign emotional value to literally everything I own. So the fact that I had this hang up about decluttering and getting rid of stuff uh, makes the fact that I was actually able to do this a couple months ago with my closet and a couple of other things that I owned uh, pretty impressive. The way that this started was that I was looking at my closet and literally lying in bed facing the closet with it open and being really upset at myself at how cluttered it was. It was just so cluttered and had so much stuff in it that was so old and the reality that like if I continue to let this fester, it would only get worse. And I feel like a lot of people when it comes to decluttering, that's kind of the mental space that they're in when they have the impetus to start, right? Like if your clothing is strewn all over the floor and you have no problem with it, cause that's just how you do, you're not gonna have any real motivation to want to clean it up, right? But if you're looking at it and you're super uncomfortable with it, then that would probably uh, motivate you to engage in this laborious task of picking up your clothes from the floor, um, which I feel is never really a positive emotion, right? And so I was not going about this from a really positive perspective, nor was I really intentionally wanting to konmari my space. And my MO as I was sorting through my clothes was to assume that I did not need anything. Right, so like the default position was get rid of it or find a really good reason to keep it. Um, and so I, I finished this process within about a week, two weeks, including when I was buying new furniture and some new hangers. Um, and in the end, I was really proud of the work that I did. Um, so now all my clothes are all in my closet. They're all hanging. Um, I have like sweatshirts and some other like scarves, miscellaneous items in another dresser. And I'm just really happy with the fact that I can see everything that I, all the clothing pieces that I own um, and that I don't have anything hidden away somewhere or in storage. Cause the idea of like storage uh, is in itself kind of a mental burden in some places. Cause you know you have these things that are just not dealt with and they're just kind of out of view and that will kind of weigh on you like it or if you're you know, it weighs on you on the whole I'm pretty happy with the end result um, but looking back on how I felt when I was doing it versus how uh, watching this Netflix show how it's supposed to be kind of got me thinking as to whether or not the task of doing something we really hate uh, should be motivated by the enjoyment of the end result um, and, and that should trump our discomfort or our sadness or our um, you know, bad feelings as we're doing the thing. Because when I was sorting out my clothes, I felt productive and there was a certain positivity in that. Um, but I was also kind of internally screaming and or rather detaching myself from my emotions as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to keep and what I didn't. Um, coming from this kind of quasi negative space of thinking that I really didn't need anything, that I should have gotten rid of this a long time ago and that um, I'm trying to be as Spartan as possible with my decisions. Um, so it wasn't a very positive space to begin with, but my mindset was kind of like, forget your emotions, they're in the way, and if you continue to dwell on the childhood memories you have with your clothes or like the emotional attachment to them, you're never gonna get anything done. And then I realized that I actually 
uh, give this advice to my students a lot of the time, right? The Whenever they're feeling overwhelmed by schoolwork and they're convinced they can't do it, um, I feel like the, I've always felt like the message of, you can do it, you're totally awesome, blah, 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 that doesn't hold, that's never held much weight to me. Um, and so I kind of assume that it doesn't hold much weight to them because they've heard it a lot. And so my advice to them has always just been like, you know, put your emotions aside, just get it done, and then you can relax afterwards. Um, because that's kind of what's worked for me. Uh, but again, as I'm watching this Netflix series and I'm realizing that that's probably not the only way you can do things, um, I'm starting to wonder if there is a way to enjoy the process, so to speak. Oh God. There's been a lot of talk about millennial burnout and these cases um, of people my age who can't manage to remember to mail out a voter registration or uh, file an insurance claim because there's just so much going on um, that the idea of doing these little menial annoying tasks kind of fall by the wayside. I have those tasks as well. I'm actually thinking about all the things I have to do uh, before school starts again tomorrow. and. Even though these tasks like remembering to write an email or uh, print out certificates for this thing I'm running, um, these are really small tasks that could reasonably be accomplished in like 15 minutes max. Um, they're objectively not difficult tasks, but the idea of having to finish, having to start them and then finish them is attached with so much negative emotion of, I really don't want to do this, that it feels like the kind of suck it up, um, advice that we often get as millennials who are painted as being just too soft and unable to kind of deal with the hardships of life um, seems to make sense uh, that these are not a big deal um, as my parents would say it is a xiao case small case not a big deal and we should just kind of suck it up and do it um, and yet you're just unable to because of these negative emotions attached to it. So like you ignore your emotions and do it or you like kind of wallow. As I'm realizing that so much of my life and my ability to get stuff done that I hate doing is fueled upon my ability to kind of divorce myself from my emotions and just complete tasks. Um, I'm realizing that honestly, we spend more time like you know, in the process of completing these texts than we do sitting down and enjoying them, right? Especially since, again, referencing this whole like millennial burnout, we don't allow our side, or we don't allow ourselves time to enjoy the fruits of our labor because there's always something else to do. Um, and so that then leads to a life that is just more or less kind of pushing aside negative emotions for the sake of getting stuff done and then positive emotions never really come into the mix. The sense of gratification never comes into the mix. And so we have to somehow find a way to make the process a positive one, which sounds like such a like, you know, granola-y thing to say, like you need to enjoy the journey, the destination is the journey. But it's hard and it's hard to be realistic with yourself and to say that um, you're going to enjoy a process of doing something that's really boring uh, or really taxing or really um, negative in some ways, right? If you think about New Year's resolutions, things like saying, I'm going to go to the gym because I want to lose weight, or I'm going to learn a new language because I want to connect with uh, my family, um, or I want to vlog because I want to work on my public speaking. These are all things that seem very neutral, but they're also tied with so many, so much baggage, right? If you're if your goal is to go to the gym and to lose weight, you carry with that the, you know, lack in self-esteem you might have from not being at your ideal, um, being your ideal body shape or f from judgment from other people. Um, if your goal is to learn a language, it's not just about learning a language. It's like, if you fail at doing that, does that mean that you've also failed at the opportunity to connect with people you love? Um, if you're like me and you're choosing to vlog uh, because you want to enhance your public speaking skills. Well, for me, it's not just like becoming a better public speaker. I want to do this because I want to be a better teacher, you know, and teaching is mostly public speaking. And so if I suck at this, does that also mean that I'm going to be a bad teacher as well? There's so much negative emotion that um, comes with our resolutions to do things. And that makes the process of getting there so much harder, because even if we tell ourselves, yes, I can do it. Well, the reality is that there's so much evidence in our lives before this that kind of told us that well, if we really could have done this, then we would have done it a long time ago. And so why is there a reason for things to change now? The thing about Marie Kondo and how she encourages people to engage in this very laborious and somewhat negative exercise of 
decluttering your life and getting rid of stuff that you might really love or have attachment to um, is that she encourages her clients to seek what sparks joy, which again is one of those like ah, things that is along in the same family of do what you love and enjoy the process and do what makes you happy. Um, but I realize how important that is because it makes the journey, it makes the process um, one where you're pursuing something positive, right? Like your goal is not to just seek the end result of having a neater house or like having your bills paid or whatever. You're finding, you're seeking out joy in the process of paying your bills or decluttering your house, right? Like you're finding things in that process that actually make you happy in itself. And I'm trying to figure out if there's a way we can kind of conjure up those same emotions as we're doing things like answering emails or like paying the bills or sending in a voter registration or like running errands, right? Um, is there a way to pursue things that spark joy when you're doing that? So as this year goes along, I'd really love to hear how you are choosing to pursue your goals in a way that isn't just keeping the end result as uh, the, the main thing that gives you happiness or propels you forward, um, and that you're not just internally screaming your way through uh, achieving your goals um, or making your resolutions, but that you're also um, finding things that spark joy in the process of doing so. Um, and I'm going to be doing the same thing as well, um, especially as I go and tackle all the things I have to get ready to do before school starts tomorrow. So, till next time.